play. Someone's been using herbal essence in Spy Hunter 2. Adam moves into his new apartment, and an assassin takes aim at the Budweiser Clydesdales in Robin Hood. Hey, loser. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. It's game time. <laughs> Go, go, Gadget co-hosts! It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb! I guess we're just accessories then. Welcome to X-Play! Today we have an underground racing game. And a violent football title. Yes! The newest Spy Hunter game where you can make your car transform into a jet ski. Why? Good question. We also have a Robin Hood game, and I know you're all trembling with anticipation over that one. Robin Hood's cool, and we send Adam here to do a little drift racing. Shh, it's illegal. What? It's illegal. Oh, gosh. But we kick things off with a review of the latest Need for Speed game. Now, EA has pumped out a number of Need for Speed games, but this is the first time they've decided to tap into the import tuning scene, popularized in the Fast and Furious movies. Now, basically, you're forced to trick out your Honda Civic with an aftermarket part or parts, and then you put stickers on it. But the, at the end of the day, it's still, you know, a Honda Civic. Whereas, after all the decals are slapped on my Razor scooter, yeah. it's still slightly embarrassing. Yeah. Here's our review of Need for Speed Underground. I feel the need, the need for, for speed. That's right, EA's seminal racing series is back and with speed to spare. This time around, things are a little different. Sure, you get licensed cars from manufacturers like Mazda, Mitsubishi, Subaru, Toyota, and more. Or less, depending on your taste in cars. But you won't have to be driving that stock Dodge Neon for long. The key here is to trick out your ride until it becomes something you'd want to drive. Want to be kingpins, meet shady challengers, interact with foxy females, and pursue a loosely tied together campaign in the underground mode. Hey, loser. <laughs> Easy, sister. If I wanted to hear someone complain while I play video games, I'd invite my girlfriend over after I meet her. No move it. The underground mode consists of an astounding 111 challenges divided into several categories. The bulk of the challenges ask you to take on other cars in circuits or one-shot deals. With aggressive computer AI, it's no easy task. You also get to try on the latest driving craze for size, drift racing. The more you skid, the bigger the bid. Another surprisingly fun event is drag racing. Shift with perfect timing or get left on the scrap heap. The end result of all this rubber burning is cold, hard cash. It can be spent to turn your lowly whip into a car tuner's playground. Buy new brakes and engine parts, or give your car one of those annoying ultra-loud mufflers that are so popular with the kids these days. But driving fast isn't enough. You're also rewarded with style points for driving like a maniac. If you're lucky, you'll make it onto the cover of one of those tacky import tuner mags. You made it onto Modified Mag. You are totally the man. There are only 20 different tracks, but they have plenty of hidden shortcuts. You'll rarely have to race the same line each lap. Need for Speed Underground features more fatal crashes than Ford's entire Pinto production run. And the replay camera gives you a chance to savor each one. The are also littered with nice details like on-track objects to run over. And much like a pair of tidy whiteies, once you lay down a skid mark, it's there for good. Two-player split-screen options and online matchups on the PS2 make this one solid racing game. If it had more tracks, it would be laying a patch on the competition. Need for Speed Underground kicks it into high gear for a four out of five. You are totally the man. 
Okay, if you're one of those people who delights in souping up your Toyota Celica and making it hecka fast, this game is for you. And one of the other new additions to Need for Speed is drift racing. Now, what is drift racing? Well, that's what we sent Adam here to find out. Except, uh, I think you got a little confused. This isn't fair. You told me to go drifting, and I took that quite literally. Mm-hmm. The life of a drifter is said to be a lonely one. So you can imagine my surprise when EA contacted me to attend a drift racing event. In preparation for this most solitary affair, I figured I'd drift my way there and get warmed up. Little did I know the trials and tribulations that awaited me. Once my Game Boy's battery died, it was just me and the locals. I just love teamwork. After a big meal, it was time for me and my new pal to get some shut-eye. He was real nice. Give me back my box! <laughs> After a hard night on the road, I was ready to enter the competition. Hey, guys. Wow, you sure pack light. What's he talking about? Hey, I'll see you from the winner's podium. Before I got started, I figured I'd get myself some vittles. Life on the road makes a man hungry. So, where are we driven to today? Albuquerque, Newark? You know I brought my thumb. Uh, you're not going anywhere. You're going to be drifting in cars, and why are you dressed like that? Is this, this isn't a hitchhiking competition. I put this together special. No, but you're welcome to take a ride if you want. And ride I did. There's the lunch. Apparently, drift racing is a new <clears throat> sport. Where tricked out imports skid around in circles. It also happens to be one of the new gameplay modes in EA's Need for Speed Underground. After going for a spin, I was ready to try out the game and some drama meat. <laughs> Turns out the drift racing mode in Need for Speed Underground is more than just a mini game. Much like figure skating, you hit the track alone and are scored based upon your driving style. The better the power slides, the more points you score. Just don't scrape the wall or you lose all your points. After you complete each race, you buy parts that can be used to upgrade your drift mobile. Boy, I wish I owned one of those right about now. With no ride home, I was ready to drift my way back to the city by the bay. Such is the life of a lonely video game show host. How dry I am. Drifters usually turn out to be serial killers. I'm gonna find a corpse in your cube, am I? No, no, the only corpses are on my computer screen and they're all polygonal. Except for that intern under the desk. The half of them. Ew! Coming up! <gasps> Harmony and understanding in That's NFL Blitz! Travis Taylor! <laughs> People loved it so much, we brought it back. The big, bold flavor of Arby's Italian beef and provolone. With beef oven roasted so it's tender and juicy, not greasy. Then marinated in Italian seasonings with authentic provolone on a soft baguette. If you haven't tried one yet, you don't know what you're missing. Gee, other than you have a really nice announcer voice. Thanks, Sarah. Excuse me, someone's at the drive-thru. <clears throat> Welcome to Arby's. Have you tried our new Italian beef and provolone? What are you eating today? Think before you move. SOCOM 2, U.S. Navy SEALs, rated M for mature. Objective completed. Just got all my shopping done. Great. 
Do 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 do. Jingle bells. No, no, it's good. I was in choir. The holidays are here. Dash through your list today at Circuit City. Save $20 on this Olympus 3.2 megapixel digital camera. Just $229.99 after mail-in rebate. Save on great gifts in every department. Circuit City, we're with you. Two clear to land. Traffic speed two jets. Imagine zooming to anywhere in a split second. Imagine 40 times mega zoom and lightning fast autofocus. Imagine what we can do together. The new Dimage Z1. Another digital breakthrough from Konica Minolta. Leo Laporte's 2004 Technology Almanac is back. It's a one-of-a-kind resource for every day of the year with advice, tips, and secrets about today's most popular technology topic. It's everything you love about the screensavers. Networking, MP3 players, we've got it all. His last two books were bestsellers, and this one is sure to follow. And don't miss all the other great books from Tech TV, including Security Alert, Sell It on eBay, and Windows XP for home use. Leo Laporte's 2004 Technology Almanac. Get it at a Barnes & Noble near you or online at barnesandnoble.com. By the power of Grayskull, it's Adam Zessler and Morgan Webb. I don't think I get to be He-Man in that for some reason. Welcome back to X-Play. We have yet another installment of NFL Blitz. Okay, for those unfamiliar with Blitz, it's the biggest arcade-style football game. There's no fair catches, lots of violence, and players who catch on fire. In other words, it's lots of fun. But then there's this year. Yeah. The NFL and NHL went to Midway and told them to tone down the very violence that made Blitz and Hit so entertaining. And what remains ain't pretty. I know. Here's our review of NFL Blitz Pro. 23. Now, set. Throws over the middle, and he makes the grab. Loose ball. At first glance, NFL Blitz Pro looks like a logical continuation of Midway's quarter-munching arcade favorite, but looks can be deceiving. This game's got hulking behemoths and the outrageous tackles that are generally more typical of what's found inside a wrestling ring than on the gridiron. Alas, NFL Blitz Pro doesn't play like you'd expect, opting for more sedate realism instead of its traditional trailblazing radicalness. Just that they can get to this quarterback. More or less. Running right. When you think of the NFL Blitz series, you think rough and tumble tackles, more passing than at Thanksgiving's dinner table, and scoring, scoring, and more scoring. That's not necessarily true with this one. Once upon a time, plays were less about pre-scripted passing routes and more about freewheeling it behind the line of scrimmage, changing the rules as you went. We used to refer to that as fun. Now for 03, NFL Blitz Pro features 11 players per side, up from the game's original seven, and there are a variety of formations, a traditional playbook, a kicking game, and get this, the ability to actually hand the ball off to a running back. Done, up the middle. Yeah, your results may vary slightly. Let's hope they do. The lack of referees here means no one is going to mistake Blitz for civilized football. Yet the wild frenetic play of the original has been reined in more tightly than a pit bull at a postal employees convention. It's no longer 30 yards for a first down, so the on-field action is much closer to <clears throat> real football. But where NFL Blitz still sets itself apart from others is the amount of contact during each play. That's not true. Since there's no pass interference, Players are free to go to town on the receivers. This rowdy contact was always a big part of Blitz, but here it's kind of confusing since so many more bodies are crowding the screen. The simple fact is, it's difficult just to spot the open receivers. So even though players can participate in an exhibition game, take their skills online, embark on a complete season, or lead their team through 10 consecutive years in a franchise mode, there's no rookie draft, salary cap to manage, coaching staff to sign, or any other element you'd find in more, shall we say, serious football games. The end result is a game that neither hardcore Blitz fans nor serious football enthusiasts will really appreciate. We can only afford the game a subpar two out of five. And it's no good. Now the oddest thing about the whole Blitz hits fiasco is that Midway also makes a baseball title, MLB Slugfest, and apparently the MLB was totally fine with the punching and the burning and the violence. 
which is one of the reasons we actually like Slugfest yeah. you know, here at X-Play. It's much better than a lot of the other just straight up baseball sims out there. Fun. Our device, make the game good again, or having the license won't make any difference. It won't. Sad. We'll be back. Up next, Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown, now in Arrowvision. The most powerful game system now has the ultimate holiday offer. Get Tetris Worlds and Star Wars, the Clone Wars, two months of Xbox Live and an Xbox for only what? Rated E to T, Xbox, it's good to play together. I have important information on how you can earn more money in the IT industry. Right now, businesses are desperate to hire certified IT professionals to secure their networks. You can fulfill this demand and make a great salary by getting IT certified now with Smart Certified Direct's fast and easy training courses. Their self-paced online training for MCSE, Cisco, and A-plus certification allows you to study whenever and wherever you want with 24-hour access to certified instructors, all with a 100% money-back certification guarantee. And right now, you can take a free training course title by visiting www.smartcertifieddirect.com or by calling 1-877-TRAINING and mentioning code TECHTV. There's no other obligation. That's on the web at www.smartcertifieddirect.com or toll free at 1-877-TRAINING. Get your free course today. What if all-wheel drive had brains? Constantly adjusting. Giving you the handling of rear-wheel drive and the traction of all-wheel drive, but only when you need it. Introducing the Infiniti G35 with intelligent all-wheel drive that changes with the weather. I can assure you the bank's closing costs are very competitive. I'll just open these blinds to let in a little extra light. <laughs> Save big money on lender closing costs with the $395 Ditech One fee. That's impossible! The $395 Ditech One fee. Why pay more? Lost another loan to Ditech. Log on to Ditech.com or call 1-800-DITECH-1. Good to show the streets of Florence where true art is together. Project Gotham Racing 2. Rated everyone. It's good to play together. Glamour and glitter, fashion and fame. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. I love that cartoon. Welcome back to X-Play. It's time for a little walk down memory lane. Yes, let's think back. Way back. All the way to that old school computer system, the Amiga. Oh, the Amiga. It's like, it's a Spanish word for friend. And we miss you, friend. Which is why it's exciting to see the old game Robin Hood Defender of the Crown re-released on multiple platforms. So, here's our review. Dear, being sure to have attached a letter to the wicked sheriff's wife. Men in tights, men that fight, men that roam, men with domes. This game's got it all. Or does it? Prince John, the king's slacker brother, decides the crown fits him pretty well and decides to take the throne, causing much ado amongst the king's loyal homies. Still, all England knows his brother John's intent is not to free him. Prince John decides that anyone that can take a good despotic joke can just go get their heads forcibly removed. Guards, these men are traitors. We would, they were executed. Enter Robin Hood. An ex-rent boy, Rupert Everett lookalike, who just wants to carry on with his drinking buddies and hang out with his old lady, the vexing and politically active Maid Marian. He's far more worried about John's opinion than he was Richard's. Robin Hood, Defender of the Crown, is really a lot of mini-games revolving around a turn-based strategy game. 
You'll start in Sherwood Forest, where these floating talking heads discuss the lighter and darker events of the wood. Not entirely surprising, is it? Little John is in charge of marshalling your merry men to kick out some dust with the Christmas-canceling miscreant of Nottingham, the Sheriff. Forever the Marxist, when Robin's low on cash, he's off to the woods with one of the more recurrent trips to the minigame forest to ambush the enemy for merry man booty. Quite a haul. Robin's arm kind of works like a turret. And accuracy was, at times, challenging. After delivering the sheriff a sound thrashing, political activist Marion convinces Robin to save England. Then I have a couple more commands for you. It is then that you'll begin to wage strategy on a mind-erasing level. Many games will begin to pummel you like a catapult. Raids and sieges, things that carry importance to cash accrual, and whether or not you live or die, are left to the whim of the game itself. Not fair. <sighs> Sword fighting side events were frustrating examples of clunky gameplay as you desperately fumbled with limited controls to parry the thrust of your far too fluent opponent. Finally, I have captured the elusive Robin Hood. If you try the siege element of the game, you'll actually crank the thumbsticks as if you're cranking the catapult. What? Our catapults are down! Your pal Ivanhoe here acts as your vassal of the manly sports. Farewell, Wilfred. My lady. Robin. So He represents you at the Joust, which also supplied a great deal of comical gameplay. Getting your horse up to speed requires you to hit buttons back and forth beyond human ability and then aim this thing at your opponent. If I could just die! With extremely awkward game elements and an AI that at times acts like Prince John himself, we stand and deliver a two out of five. Farewell, Sheriff. Until next we meet. So, people who finally remember this game and their Amiga are yeah. old. And they may want to pick this up, but the rest of you will suffer in Sherwood Forest in this version. Yeah, the merry men just don't seem so merry anymore. Coming up! It's got more firepower than you can shake a third world dictatorship at. And I thought only we used Jeep innuendo! Dave! Brian! Are these your consultants? They're providing an ongoing assessment. We're on a standardized Dell Linux solution. Power Edge servers, Intel Xeon processors. What about assessment? Validation? Deployment? Dell services are proven and scalable end-to-end. -end. They're customer-centric. We're more, uh, contractually inseparable. Manage your enterprise for less with the flexibility of Dell products and services. Call or go online today. Introducing the first SUV with a power sliding rear roof. Whoa. The new GMC Envoy XUV. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. I'll have a blue. It won't hook up to our TV. We don't want your gift of a DVD player or video game system to make the holidays blue because it can't be hooked up. So get a stereo RF modulator from Radio Shack. It delivers full stereo sound and hooks up your electronics to TVs without the proper inputs. Sorry, baby. I should have checked the TV. The Stereo RF Modulator from Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. There are three things you can count on in life. Death, taxes, and cable rate increases. Thousands of Americans each day have realized that rising cable rates and poor service are not their only choice. People are switching to Direct TV. Switching from cable has never been easier, especially now that you can get a four-room system for free. With the Direct TV Total Choice Plus, with local channels programming package, you get over 130 channels of your favorite programming with true digital quality picture and sound. And best of all, you get your favorite local channels too. Direct TV also offers premium programming from HBO, Star, Showtime, Cinemax, plus Sports Pack. Plus up to 55 pay-per-view choices a day. Plus you get your choice of the best sports programming available, including NFL Sunday Ticket, exclusively from Direct TV. Your choice has never been easier. Call now to order your Direct TV system for up to four rooms for free. That's a $299 value. And your standard professional installation is always included. Call now. 
It's Tech TV's Top 20 Gifts. We're counting down the best buys for the holiday season. Tech TV's experts tested thousands of products. This is the kind of toy you dream about. To bring you the list of the Top 20 Gifts to give and get this holiday. We picked out the best of the best. Tech TV's Top 20 Gifts. Sunday night at 8, 7 central on Tech TV. Thundercats, ho! It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. It's a weird theme tonight. Welcome back to X-Play. In spite of their arcade cabinets, we're popping up in pizza parlors in 1983. You could not pry most people away from them. Like peanut butter and chocolate, the wonderful synergy of shooting and driving would go together. Yeah. Even when they're rendered in giant pixels. People like driving and shooting. Mm -hmm. But since then, Spy Hunter has raced its way onto consoles, fueled by nostalgia and technical upgrades, thankfully. Now we get a sequel to the remake. And it has something the original never had. Attractive women. I was going to say the ability to transform into a jet ski, mm. but whatever. Mm. Here's our review of Spy Hunter 2. Spy Hunter's Alex Sex has received some intriguing upgrades. Some for the better. Here's your new toy, Alec. The other kids will be so jealous, at least the ones you don't blow away first. Some for the worse. Agent Bevel is under attack. Protect her at all costs. But the AI could use a few adjustments. Once you get your head inside of the interceptor, best to keep your hands inside of the car, as you will quickly be fired upon, pummeled, thrashed, burned, nuked, insulted, probably even have a few cow patties tossed at you by irate farmers who are tired of having guided missiles cross their field. This game, from the onset, throws everything at you but the Russian mink. It's as if someone chose the unholy all hell all the time raining down in your head difficulty level for you, and there is no option to make it any easier. Of course, there's your standard cape and swagger storyline involving Russians and colorfully named gang bosses. He won't share what he knows until he's addressed his countrymen. Politics. It almost seems as if the developers didn't expect you to read the loading screen dossier on your next mission. Here, for example, a conservative southern senator and a former television evangelist, get this, with ties to environmental and animal rights groups, has run afoul of local gang lord Mojo Carter. Woohoo! only in a video game, folks. A wide variety of locales make up the game. Here, for example, you're in the fun-filled streets of New Orleans, Louisiana, where you've been charged with limiting civilian casualties. At times, Spy Hunter 2 literally breaks your vehicle into different forms based on exposure to damage or terrain. A handy flip of a switch modification makes the interceptor into a four-wheel drive tank, giving you stability and traction on anything loose under tire. Aiming becomes rather sketchy at times. The firing reticle will sometimes auto-target and at other times stray frustratingly close, but not quite on, the target. The explosions in the game are quite spectacular and add to the over-the-top nature of the wild ride. The environment also responds well to kinetic exposure, throwing obstacles and pieces of debris around like plates in a Greek restaurant. With glitchy graphics and a tiresome retro camera angle, we have to give Spy Hunter 2 a 3 out of five. All right, but before we go, we're gonna yeah. be like a dish rag and squeeze in a viewer mail. Today's viewer mail is from Jeannie, AKA Uber Biatch Ooh, from like New girl. York. New York, yeah, it sounds like your type of woman. Yeah. Yes, she asks. You guys covered this thing a few months back. It was the Atari joystick that came with like four games. And then you remember Pac-Man. You plug it into your television set and played, no system required. I can't, for the life of me, remember what it was called. Help me, help me. We're here, we're Yay. here, we're here. Okay, you know, there's a little bit of confusion here because there's quite a few of these yeah. joysticks out there. The Atari joystick doesn't have the Pac-Man, but there nice. is one that does have Pac-Man. That's made by Namco. Yes, I'm going to play a little Pac-Man right now. All right, so this is the Namco joystick. And not only has Pac-Man, it's got Dig Dug. Remember Dig Dug? Go yes. Dig and, and Dug. Yes. Bosconian, Galaxian, and there's also Rally, Rally X. X. That one's cool, too. So then you just take some batteries. You just plug them into the uh, video and audio cables in the back of your television. And it has everything contained in here, which shows you how far the technology has come, that these things used to be in arcade cabinets. Like and now they are little tiny things on I'm your... Kicking in the palm of your hand. 
hand. Yeah. See? And you know what? They're only about 20 to 30 bucks. They're so yes. cool. No, there's supposed to be a Atari one which has 10 games in it. There's also an Intellivision one, and there's one from Activision as well. And the price is good. And if you need a, uh, you know, something to make people happy in your life, it's a good idea. Although you know what, the little, the joysticks sometimes are a little yeah. less than responsive yes, in the way that you would is... like them to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Today on X-Play's Not